Tippett's, Tillamook, Chinooks, Kathlamas, and Wakia come to resemble each other as well in their persons and dress as in their habits and manners. Their complexion is not remarkable, being the usual copper brown of most tribes in North America. The dress of the man consists of the small robe. It is made most commonly of the skins of a small brown animal. They have also a number of the skins of the tiger cat. Some of those of the elk, which are used principally on their war excursions. Others are the skins of the deer, panther, and bear, and a blanket woven with the fingers of the wool of the native sheep. A mat is sometimes temporarily thrown over the shoulders to protect them from rain. They have no other article of clothing whatever, neither winter nor summer, and every part except the shoulders and back is exposed to view. They are very fond of the dress of the whites, which they wear in a similar manner when they can, can obtain them, except the shoe, which I have never seen worn by any of them. The dress of the women consists of a robe of tissue, and sometimes when the weather is uncommonly cold, a vest. Their robe is much smaller than that of the men, never reaching lower than the waist, nor extending in front sufficiently for to cover the body. The most esteemed and valuable of these robes are made of the strips of the skins of sea otter. When this vest is worn, the breast of the women is concealed, but without it, which is most always the case, they are exposed. The garment which occupies the waist cannot properly be denominated a petticoat. It is a tissue of white cedar bark, the whole being of sufficient thickness when the female stands erect to conceal those parts usually covered by familiar view. But when she stoops, this battery of Venus is not altogether impervious to the inquisitive eye of the Amorite. The most remarkable trait in their physiognomy is the peculiar flatness and width of the forehead which they artificially obtain by compressing the head between two boards while in infancy. From the top of the head to the extremity of the nose is one straight line. This process seems to be continued longer with their female children and neither appear to suffer any pain from the operation. These people mark their skins by puncturing and introducing a coloring matter. The favorite ornament of both sexes are the common horse and white which the men wear tightly around their They also wear them around the neck, which is also fond of species of which is furnished them by a trader The men sometimes wear collars and bear collars, and the women and children the tusks of the Both sexes bracelets on the wrists of copper, brass, or iron. The trade on the part of whites consists in vending guns, principally old British or American muskets, powder, salts, and shot, copper and brass kettles, brass tea kettles and coffee pots, blankets from two to three point, scarlet and blue, beads and tobacco with fishing hooks, buttons, and some other small articles. For these they receive in return from the natives dressed and undressed elk skins, the sea otter, common otter, the beaver, the common fox, and tiger cat. Also dried and pounded salmon in baskets, a kind of biscuit which the natives make of roots called by the shell. The implements used by the Chinooks and Clacks in hunting are the gun, the bow and arrow, deadfalls, pits, snares, and spears or pigs. The bow and arrow is the most common instrument among them, every man being furnished with them, whether he has a gun or not. This instrument is employed indiscriminately 